Hey guys, so Toei finally dropped what you could call a trailer for Sailor Moon Crystal Season 4 after what feels like years. Oh, wait, it has been years. Anyway, they're calling it Eternal, which makes some sense based on the content that the arc is based on. In any case, let's take a closer look at all of this. As we all know, Sailor Moon Eternal is an adaptation of the fourth arc of the Sailor Moon manga, which is probably my favourite arc because of how different it is to the old anime. For instance, we have a lot more development for the inner century and more significant moments overall. The first thing we can notice from the trailer is the new character designs. As you may or may not know, Kazuko Tadano is the character designer for this series or movies of Sailor Moon Eternal. She was the character designer for the first and second seasons of the first Sailor Moon anime. This naturally included the Sailor Moon R movie too. These designs definitely bring a nostalgic vibe to the Crystal franchise which has had multiple designs up until this point. You may also unknowingly have come across Tadano's work in Wedding Peach where she was the character designer as well as a few other works. I will talk more about Tadano and her vision later, but first let's take a quick journey through what has led to this point. Crystal in itself has been a tumultuous ride full of so much changes as many of you will know. I know just the wait for the announcement of this arc was hard because news is few and far between. Nevertheless, when news does come, like the recent Eternal trailer, it energises the whole fandom again. Announced in 2012 as a remake for the summer of 2013, Sailor Moon Crystal kept getting pushed back, and back, and back, until it eventually premiered in 2014. The director of the series was Munahisa Sakai, who has worked in a wide array of other shows such as Precure, One Piece, and the most recent Zombieland Saga. Sakai wanted to bring the manga to life, aiming Crystal to women who watched the show when they were younger and had now grown up. He wanted it to be a show that inspired people and allowed them to relate to the characters. Specifically, he wanted the series to have wonderful detail from the flow of the clothes and the hair to the overall tone of the show being more delicate. The character designer, Yuki Sako, was chosen by audition and had never worked with Toei before. The goals of her designs were to match Takeuchi's designs while making them more modern and fitting for an anime style. She used the recent additions as the base for her designs, and you can see what she was aiming for. According to a translation of a magazine interview by Sailor Moon fan site Miss Dream, however, she did say that she came across some trouble balancing the manga designs with a modern anime style, but she eventually came to a balance of both. Sako was known for drawing beautiful male characters, which matched up perfectly with the shoujo theme of this anime. We can see that she was aiming for a very mature looking character design. She included nice shadings and dreamy colouring, and the characters looked somewhat like the manga designs. However, one of the main complaints was the proportions of the characters. Overall, we can see she tried to blend the manga designs with an elegant anime touch. She had a lot of fine details too, such as the strands of hair, and the pleats in the skirt. Unfortunately, Sailor Moon Crystal Season 1, which actually wasn't called Season 1 in the beginning, but was essentially Season 1, had a spectrum of fan reactions ranging from positive to negative. Some liked the designs, while others would have preferred a more 90s nostalgic design. It didn't help that the series only aired every first and third Saturday of each month, most likely because it was an original net animation and production trouble. We had some great looking episodes which fully displayed the grace of the character designs, but there were so many episodes with errors. Luckily, most of these errors got fixed with the Blu-ray release. However, some still managed to stay in. Season 1 also tried to expand upon elements of the series, and in one of the interviews they mentioned that as the manga was completed, they could add things in which would act as a foretelling to later events. Unfortunately, because the show was a one-to-one -one format, so each episode followed each act of the manga, some of the additions just didn't fit in well because the potential to expand into those stories just wasn't there. This resulted in some rushed moments. 
It didn't help that graphic content, most likely because of Japanese laws, couldn't be shown, which resulted in the removal of some epic moments from the manga, such as Sailor Venus killing Beryl. Yep, she's amazing. Although I personally enjoyed it because I was so excited to see the manga play out again, it was sad that it didn't live up to the potential of the original vision, because it would have been amazing. Anyway, I'm holding out for an eventual re-release with corrections in time for the 50th anniversary. <laughs> So then we moved on to season 2, and it started to feel different in terms of pacing and mood, and there were little changes like more range of emotions in the visual portrayal of the characters. It's possible that they were either going for the intended vision, since we got some amazing episodes, featuring the animation of Keiko Iwata, with gorgeous flowing hair and rich details, which reflects what they were originally intending to do with the series, or they were responding to fan complaints at the time. I'll let you decide. Season 3 aired in April 2016 until July of that year and had a change of staff. We had a new director of the series, Chiaki Kon, known for her directorial and storyboarding work, which includes other series that were also adaptations of other manga. We also got Akira Takahashi as a character designer, known for his simple but bubbly, colourful and easily animated designs, and his work on other series such as Aikatsu, and eagle-eyed viewers will know that he participated in Season 1 and 2 of Sailor Moon Crystal already. So, let's talk about Season 3's design. They opted for a more simpler aesthetic, and that's reflected within the details. So, the skirts were less pleated and more fan-like, the zigzag highlights were replaced with the bubble highlights. There are plenty of positives about this design though. The simplicity is actually key in this because it's what made it work. The designs could move better, they were more emotive. They gave the eyes a lot more depth than maybe the first and second series. One weird thing about these designs is that they seem to have aged backwards. Because this was the third arc of the manga, they were getting older but these designs made them look younger than the season 1 and 2 designs, so there was kind of a weird consistency issue with that. But at the same time, they kept the designs looking very fresh and clean and vivid and bold. The colours were very eye-catching and it was a very pretty design. The body proportions were much more on point as well. Some people mentioned that it was closer to the 90s design and I can't really see it, but I suppose it was closer to the 90s designs than the first and second series. Overall, these designs allowed for more range of emotion from the characters, and the easier animation meant that we would have more consistency within the episodes. So overall, with the director and character design changing, it gave the show a new direction from the first and second series, although it was still under the crystal bubble. Season 3 had a much darker tone, and they rearranged a few scenes to make the pace of the narrative better. It also was a bit more closer to the manga, opting not to add too many expansions. Though I also think that the third series benefited because by then the manga had started to get more meaty with the story anyway. Although season 3 was definitely a lot better planned with the designs of characters and production starting well in advance which was reflected in the details such as there being multiple openings and endings. And there was also plenty of gorgeous stock footage across the season. So now we have the Sailor Moon Eternal movies. And there's some even more changes like Naoko Takeuchi is now a supervisor of the series. This is actually quite interesting because the first promo picture we got for these two movies showed a panel that's direct from the manga. This is promising uh, and hopefully it will continue the trend of adhering to the manga, but because it's two movies, hopefully we'll get some expansions on key moments. So as I mentioned earlier, Tadano is back and it's a really unique event as she never got to work on the latter half of Sailor Moon. So in a way, this is her moment to conclude the series that she really helped propel into animated stardom. According to a translation of the Pretty Guardian newsletter, which came out recently via Tuxedo Unmasked, which I'll link below, Tadano states, I want to make sure my designs are reminiscent of the past while bringing with them a modern nuance, all while being faithful to Miss Takeuchi's original imagery. So from her designs, we can definitely see aspects of the, her past 
90s designs permeating through these new ones but they've been wonderfully brought up to date and, and they're bringing some freshness to Crystal which has been laid to rest for a good three years. You could say that some has been applied to the designs of season three with these new designs as they have this eye-catching appeal but they're wrapped up in a ball of gorgeous simplicity. I really love these new designs although I kind of feel that they're a bit more catered to the 90s but it is understandable considering that Tadano is back. So she, she's bringing the past style and just rejuvenating it for this era. But I mean, look how much more, they all look so alive and it looks very much more flowy. Like it looks more like it, it, it'll be great in movement. Obviously it's kind of hard to tell what uh, it will look like in animation because either these are just like the first images we've gotten. But I mean, you know, it's just the little details. I mean, if you look at Venus's hair, what, that kind of wave, gives the impression that we will get that the flow of animation delivered and they, they won't just be, you know, pretty designs. Interestingly, so they look, they look a bit more older than the third series, although they don't look as old as the first series of Crystal. It will be very interesting to see these designs in motion and hopefully we'll get a trailer soon demonstrating what they look like because obviously key art can look a bit different to how it ends up looking in the final product. But so far, I mean, they stand out, they're eye-catching, they're striking images, and, you know, Tadano has experience on this series, so I'm sure these designs will deliver. Now, if we look at all the designs together across the whole Crystal franchise, you can see how how it's kind of shifted from season one being very much more stylized and detailed but disproportionate to some to a shifting to more simple design that's more easy and colorful to this new design that's kind of a, a hybrid of both it, it's very much a mix of season one to three and thrown in with the 90s I wouldn't say that they look like the recent manga editions, but they definitely have elements of them, but it definitely looks more like it appeals to a 90s audience, which was to be expected because of who the designer is. And I'm, I'm actually excited to see how they look once we get more pieces of art and yeah, it's just, it's, it, it, it does get hard to tell how it will end up in animation from looking at the poster. So we really do need that trailer to come out soon. Overall though, I'm pretty excited for this next, well, I can't even call it series anymore, these, this, these movies coming out. Um, I'm just, I can't wait to see the fourth arc animated. There's so much epic moments. I really hope that they have more real time attacks, although I really love the stock footage that they use. I kind of miss the real time battles from the first and second series. And I like how fast paced they make it feel, although, you know, I can, I can appreciate that when you're reading it in, in the book, it kind of goes by too fast for an animated medium. Um, I do wonder if they'll probably show the transformations only once in the whole movie or once per movie, because obviously, I mean, it will have to be probably gorgeously animated, but then to only show it once will be such kind of unfortunate but to repeat it lots of times, I don't know how that will work, especially because each act kind of focused on a different character. But I'm not sure how that will translate in a movie unless they were to maybe rearrange it and have all of the events happening at the same time. So I really don't know how it will work in two movies, but there are some cliffhanger moments in this arc that they can use to break it up a bit. Possibly, I hope that they might have some more graphic moments because it's a movie, though I don't really know the laws too much. I know that that's why they couldn't have a lot of the hardcore moments in the last few series and they had to kind of water them down because of these laws. Um, or I could be t talking total rubbish, I don't know. Overall, I'm looking to just enjoying more Sailor Moon and it would be great if it could come out in the cinemas here in the UK, but. I'm not sure because we actually haven't gotten any of the series 
licensed here yet so I don't know if that is a possibility or if it will appear on one of the uh, streaming platforms online but I suppose more of those details will come out as time progresses. There just hasn't been much news at all and so when these tidbits of information comes to it's literally like our crops have been watered. <laughs> so I'm hoping that more details come soon but if they've said they said it's coming out in 2020 so I would expect more details but in any case I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are on Sailor Moon Eternal, Sailor Moon Crystal Eternal, Sailor Moon Eternal and what your expectations for it and it would be nice if you could comment below with them so yeah thanks for watching oh don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you found it interesting if you want to see more content comment below and let me know